Super Castlevania IV is an action platformer released for the Super Nintendo in 1991 and the fourth entry in the Castlevania series, which began on the original Nintendo console in the 1980s. Despite the Super Nintendo being the first console I ever played as a kid, I never played Super Castlevania IV until recently as an adult. What's more, this game has been my introduction to the Castlevania series, so consider this analysis free of any bias associated with childhood nostalgia. Super Castlevania IV's story forms a chapter in the centuries-old conflict between the vampire-slaying Belmont family and Dracula, the same vampire from Bram Stoker's legendary novel. While this vampire story has been recurrently recycled in our culture's art, it continues to inspire magnificent dark horror in other forms a century later, from Castlevania to the Helsing Ultimate anime. The narrative of Super Castlevania IV is not intrusive and concisely told in scrolling text at the start of the game. Dracula has been revived, and after his last defeat a century ago, it's up to Simon Belmont, who the player controls, to put him back in the grave. This minimal plot is plenty serviceable for this relatively short Super Nintendo game that can be beaten in one or two sittings. The gameplay experience is a mix of combat and platforming, progressing through 11 varied stages, each with at least one boss to fight at some point. The stages are divided into subsections, and dying will cause you to start back at the start of the current subsection. If you run out of lives and get a game over, you'll be sent back to the first subsection of the stage, and also provided a password to return to that point if you feel like quitting and picking up from there another time. This structure felt fair, and while it caused me to have to replay a few difficult sections repeatedly, such points usually provided an opportunity for me to sharpen some skills or change strategy to find a way forward. The game's difficulty increases gradually, and trains the player to meet later challenges. I found early bosses to be quite easy, but later ones required a lot more trial and error to conquer. Simon moves slowly and can't jump incredibly far, but control of him is precise and responsive with the Super Nintendo controller. Move with the D-pad, jump with B, use R for sub-weapons, which can be found by breaking candles, and press Y for a whip attack. The directional pad can be used to control the direction of whipping in eight directions, and by holding Y, Simon stands still while the D-pad can then be used itself as an attack button that flicks the whip around freely and without limit. Simon's moveset is simple, yet deceptively and amazingly flexible, and I've found myself relying on every whip technique I had to survive various onslaughts. The sub-weapons felt nicely balanced as power-ups, as they often made the game easier but were never required to best any one foe. Sub-weapons consume droppable hearts, and once those are exhausted, you'll only have your whip again. I felt that every single enemy and boss in the game posed a fair challenge. Each of them could be overcome by studying the enemy's movements carefully and choosing wise windows of opportunity to attack. In this sense, I would compare the core gameplay quite closely with Dark Souls, a more modern game that is also known for challenge and promoting deliberate, careful gameplay. Like in Dark Souls, Super Castlevania IV is a game that requires the player to be fully engaged and alert to have success. There are times in the game when quickly and decisively dispatching enemies in your way will serve you best, but there are also other times where traps or crowds of enemies encourage the player not to linger in an area, but move through a passage quickly just to get to safety and avoid needless damage. My biggest complaint about the game is that stairs are a bit clumsy and awkward to traverse, and to leave Simon vulnerable due to the jump button being disabled while scaling them. Additionally, if you try jumping on stairs without holding up, you'll fall right through them, often to an instant death. This took me a while to get used to, and before I did, I died many times. It just takes a little more work from the player than other games demand to safely engage with stairs here. But it is doable. I have only shining praise for the visuals and audio of the game. Sprites and environments are detailed and colorful. A few stages introduce some dynamically moving elements, such as flowing water or swinging chandeliers. 
Not only was Dracula's castle varied and beautiful to behold, but so were the forests and caverns I traversed on the way there. The sound effects were simple but satisfying, and the music is outstanding. Not only are there the expected gothic orchestral compositions, but also more eclectic tracks that adventure into rock and jazz. At one point I found myself being serenaded by jazz flute while being assaulted by mermen. I appreciate a game which can treat me to such a unique experience. The sound quality was top-notch, particularly some of the drum samples. Overall, the soundtrack delivers catchy, atmospheric soundscapes that fit the dark aesthetics of the game very well. In terms of length, this, like many other Super Nintendo titles, can be beaten in one long sitting. However, for me playing the game for the first time, multiple deaths stretched out my playtime to around 9 hours, which I broke up into a couple sessions. I can report that the password system in the game works perfectly, and I was able to pick up right where I left off when I was ready to beat the game. And when I did, I got the same rewarding feeling I'm treated to by beating any difficult but well-crafted game. Super Castlevania 4 is highly recommended for fans of dark fantasy, horror, or quality 2D action platforming. <laughs>